Returning to our animation assignment, it's important that I open up both my assets file, this one, which is here, and my stage file, two Photoshop documents open in Photopea that look very, very similar. And if I have my rulers turned on, which I recommend, Command R, you'll see that they're both 800 by 800 pixels. It'll also say it in the bottom corner. Now my assets, how do I know the difference between them? Because they look really similar. My assets has all of these different layers, all these different folders, all the different expressions I might want to make. My stage file just has my finished animation frames so far. And I can use the little eyeballs to see how far I've gotten along my, my plan in my keyframes. So this was frame one. It's kind of a generic face. Frame two, come on. There we go. A book starts to come down. Frame three, frame four, frame five. There we go. <laughs> and I wish photo B was a little bit more responsive. So I'm going to make sure I turn off my other things. Because even at these low resolutions, we're asking quite a bit of it to process it for us. I'm trying to get a sense of this frame. So it looks identical to this frame. Pretty, yes. Okay. So that's where I left off. Then I have one more frame here where I moved it down further. So let me recreate that. Very close. There we go. All right, so now I've got the frames matching. My assets frame and my stage frame. And I have these first five frames. And in the last video, if I look at our channel and our playlist, we animated a sequence as a GIF and we did that with our rough storyboard, right? And we did that through the program that is in the assignment. So let's get to the assignment. So now I'm going to run a quick animation test of the frames I have so far. So this is going to be under assignments, assignment three, right where you post. And the site is called easy.com gif or easygif.com slash maker. But in order to use it, I need to be able to drag and drop JPEGs in. So I'm going to open up my stage file, which is this one, and I'm going to save these five frames. So what do I do? I start with frame one. I just say file, export as JPEG. Turn on the next layer, export as JPEG. Turn on the next layer, file, export as JPEG. Turn on the next layer, export as JPEG. Next layer, export as JPEG. And you might wonder, if that's what we need to do to make the animation, why don't I just export my JPEGs from my stage or from my assets when I flatten them? But this actually shows you what you were planning. The animation website will show you if it's working the way you want it to. And so the stage is how you figure out how to get it to work exactly the way you want, right? It gives you all the options. Now I'm going to take 
all of these and I'm just going to drag and drop them in. I'm not going to take the time to organize them into a folder because this is just a quick test. I'm going to keep the standard delay and I'm just going to say make a GIF. And it's going to go a little faster than I might need, but yeah, that frame rate's pretty, pretty believable. My little expressions, they're fine. <laughs> I'm wondering if it might be better if I just left the expressions the same. Or at least the eyes the same. And that's why we have the two. So, because I'm reviewing it, let's start from this stage, from my first frame. Because I have set all this up, in my assets, I can recreate any frame I want. So what if I want this to be my next frame? These are the steps. So Cassandra at the back, these are the steps to move from your assets to your stage. Okay. First, I need to click on the layer, the topmost layer that's visible. Then, I need to scroll to the very bottom, holding down shift and select all the layers. Then I hold down option while going to layer and I say merge layers. Because I'm holding down option, it won't actually flatten them all. It will give me a merged new layer at the top. This is called a non-destruct merge. Then I have to select it all. So I hit command A to select it all. I can go to select all. Then I need to copy it all. So I go to edit copy or command C. And sometimes I'll hit command C a few times to make sure that it copies. Then I go to my stage file and because I'm replacing this layer and seeing if I like this new one better, you go on to the layer on which you want to add the next frame. And I hit edit paste. Command V. And if it didn't copy, <laughs> hit Command C again. I've been having trouble with that. Edit, copy, then go to that, and then edit, paste. There we go. So, what's the difference between this layer and this layer? Well, it's just whether I wanted to change the expression or not. I'm thinking I don't want to change the expression, so I'm going to replace that frame. Now let's set up the next frame. To do that, I go back to my assets and I first have to hit Command D to deselect. And then I hit Delete to delete that merged frame. And then I build my next frame. And this time, I am going to change a little bit of the expression. Actually, maybe not yet. No, I'll just do it this way. So I go to my topmost layer, make sure it's selected, hold down Shift, scroll down to the bottom. Holding on shift the whole time, it all is selected. Hold down option and say layer merge layers. It's going to give me a non-destructed layer at the top. Command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all. Go to my stage. Command V to paste it in. So what do I like better? I think those are the, the frames where I'm not going to have any change in expression. All right. Then the expression is going to start to change a little bit. Just to give some life to my creature, my character. Because sensing that something's coming. All right, good. Now I go back to my assets. I hit Command D to deselect and then delete. <coughs> so what is my animation so far? Let me go to my animation test. Let me save this. Just save image as. Just save it to the desktop. I'll call it test one. Save. Then I'm going to delete all of these. You could just move them to your downloads folder. 
or keep them in the downloads folder but and now I'm going to output a new set now these are slightly different so I'm going to do it again starting with layer one file export as JPEG save next layer doesn't look that different but it is export as it will be noticeable in animation save next one file export as JPEG save file export as JPEG save doesn't take that long file export as JPEG save okay now I've got all of those I'm gonna open up that easy gif.com maker and drag all of these in they're all the same resolution the same format won't take long I'm gonna change the timing to well, I'll just keep it the same make a gif and now the expression doesn't change to the very end there and I think I like that better all right what do I need to do to keep going well, I could always save this. This is test two. You don't need to save these test GIFs, but it's just showing you how we get a GIF animation. And then if I open both of them up, I can test them in a web browser. So this is the only thing I use Safari for. So there's the first one. Sorry, here's the first one where the eyes kind of dart a little bit too much. Here's the second one. I like that one better, right? So that's why you sometimes run animation tests. Figure out what you want. But it can waste your time to do it too much. But here I'm good. So far, with my stage, so far so good. Now let's move on to the next frame. So this is where I left off going to move the book down a little bit more and now I get to have some fun with other ways of playing with these assets I'm going to change the expression a little bit I'm going to go from meh 1 to meh 3 so from this to this and I'm going to start to make the book glow so this is called animating with layer styles now, whenever you're altering the pixels, moving them, transforming them, you need to make a duplicate, right? So that you can go back and find an old setup. But when you're adding lighting effects or what are called layer styles, you can just do that to the layer itself. So the way you do a layer style is you double click on the layer next to the name, but not on the name and it will open up these layer styles. If I want the book to glow, I'm going to choose something like outer glow and then open up those settings. And I can play with the size. So it's starting to glow as it gets close to the head, right? And I can do an inner glow and I can play with the size and make it subtle. Can even take the opacity down a little bit and I can start playing with my base right I have an inner shadow on my head so instead of making that its own layer I can start to play with the effect and I can take its opacity down so that there's just the faintest shadow as this book gets close and then as it touches down to the head, it's going to get stronger and stronger. So what's nice about layer styles is you can always have infinite opportunities to recreate a frame just by using them. So this is my next frame. So what do I do? I go to my top most visible layer, which is my book. Hold down shift and go to the very bottom. That will select all those layers. Then go to layer. While holding down Option, click on Merge Layers. Then Command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all. 